Aloha Honolulu, Data here with episode 30, 30 of the Honolulu Huskies Custom Fantasy Draft Franchise Mode, moving into year number 11, the 2029-2030 regular season. It's been quite a road here in Honolulu. We are Stanley Cup champions coming off another offseason that we thought was going to be a bit brutal, having to move a guy like Eli Tolvanen, but due to Lee Sweeney taking such a cheap contract, 84 overall, medium lead potential. He wanted two years at 0.925. So we took that and ran, and we allowed us to use that uh, that money in other places, such as keeping our top six together, having a very strong top nine, and on defense, that allowed us to go after Fred Menino. We had to move Ty Smith because we thought we wouldn't have the money. Now, looking at it in retrospect, we could have kept... Ty Smith, but I think Fred Menino is going to be a good acquisition, an offensive defenseman, defensive defenseman pair here with Quinn Hughes. He is medium elite, 83 overall, lots of potential to grow, 94 shot blocking, 90 stick checking. I think that he's going to be a great uh, piece here on Honolulu, five-star physical, all that good stuff. So as you'll see on the channel, I took a couple days off to hear from all of you for the lineup, for your suggestions. I also took a couple days off of NHL. Uh, well, actually one day off of uploads to update the channel, as you'll see by the new logo, the new thumbnail, the new banner, the new little video intro. I'm still trying to find out what works best with the video intro, but that is all new thanks to my friend Alessandro that put it all together. So thank you very much to him. I hope all of you like it. Let me know your thoughts on the logo and the new design of the channel. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. So without further ado, let's hop into the comments from the last one. MVL12K7, your bottom six, did you check defensive awareness? Let me go check it out right here. Dimitri, 86 defensive awareness. Paling, 82 defensive awareness. It's more for his face-offs that I have him. It's it's a bit of a trade-off. At least he has the 80 face-offs. And VAU, 82 defensive awareness. So not the best, but it's I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a crunch here because I need these guys to get NHL times, especially because Evnikov and VAU. So we'll see what works out with the fourth line. We'll come back to that. Uh, Rantanen is your captain. Who would you put as your captain? I think he means who is your alternate captain. So we'll get to that after. For your defense, you have a good mix of youth and experience. Perfect. Louis Malar says, if Menino doesn't perform well enough, reach for Chikrin. We're looking at acquiring Jake Chikrin from the uh, Hurricanes. You'll have an advantage since he has retained salary and maybe even get Tom Wilson or Michael Rasmussen, change sniper to power forward or grinder, depending on the aggressiveness. That would be an option for the fourth line, definitely. So we're going to see how this team simulates. And a guy like Wilson or Chikrin or even Patrick Kane, as we're about to see in this next comment, could be an option down the road. So this comment coming from Yerka Halby. Handled the offseason great, as always. We try to pick up Kane at the deadline, but the salary is so high, we'll also have to see what you figure out. Also, Chikrin looks okay since he's on the block. It should be more than okay to get him if the guy you acquired from the wings, Menino, does not grow much. Also try to look for a high poise goalie maybe into the playoffs since Sweeney did not have the best numbers in the last playoffs. Agreed. So I suggest start Sweeney as number one in the playoffs, and if he just does not perform, don't be afraid to go for the high poise goalie as your starter in the playoffs. Good luck to you next year. Looking forward, as always. P.S. We have always thought that my brother, Yerki Engren, is a little zip, which was confirmed when he left Honolulu. If you could just look where he landed since we haven't talked since he left the team as I got a bit upset with him. Of course, I will do that for you, Yerka. And uh, Foo Cards 88 he says, You drafted the son of my favorite player of all time, Paul Correa. That's true. In the seventh round of last episode, we drafted Cyrus Correa. And last comment coming here from Dictator Zav. I cracked a chuckle when you said Brent Seabrook regenerated himself. Authenticity and comedy, a true hybrid. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. So let's look at what we what those comments asked for. The first thing we've got to look at are the captains. I believe they, they have remained the same. I don't think anyone has moved who had an, a letter. I believe it's still Captain Ranton with alternate Silver and Anderson. Yep, still the same right there. And then looking where Yerky Angren left, I want to sign him. He would have played bottoms uh, on. The, he would have pay, played third pair of defense on this team. He would have had a spot, but he didn't want it. He wanted to go to free agency. So let's see where he ended up. He was a low elite prospect of ours who just decided to leave Honolulu. So he is now on the New York Rangers. He's at an 82 overall, low elite. He signed for one year, 0.9. I was offering him more than that. 
but yeah, he's a pretty good defense uh, defenseman. He has good uh, offensive stats, even though his shooting isn't crazy beyond three stars. He has four star defense, uh, only two star skating, two and a half star physical. But I think it's that five star puck skills that really uh, makes him something special. Soft hands with Yerky Engren. So there you go, Yerka. That's where your brother's off to. New York Rangers, the team that we beat in the Stanley Cup Finals last year. But without further ado, boys, we are ready to hop into year number 11 as defending Stanley Cup champions. The scouts are sent out, and I'm very excited to see. Will we be able to capture a fifth consecutive, five, fifth executive consecutive president's trophy now i'm trying to get a new ahl head coach but of course the coaching is so broken you need to sign him as an assistant coach promote him to the head coach demote your head coach to goalie coach it's such a process so i'm still trying to figure that out in the ahl i had a guy but then he said oh you're full because you can't not have a coach uh at any time and in the nhl you put it in a, an interim head coach but in the ahl you can't have an interim head coach you can only have a head coach so I have to sign Boudreau here as my associate coach. I need to give him a big contract to make him want to sign on because he's B-minus AHL head coach, so why would he want to do that? I make him my associate coach, and then I have to fire my head coach, make the associate coach turn into my head coach, and then hire a new associate coach. A very broken system, so well done EA as always. But now we can do it, boys. First game, we're at Diamond Head Arena. All the boys are set. The lines are ready to go. We have plus fives, plus threes, plus threes. We're looking for big seasons once again from all of our scorers. Defense, we have to keep an eye on that. Fourth line, we have to keep an eye on that. But game one of year number 11 against the Calgary Flames, a team that we have beaten many times in the playoffs in this series. Let's do it. First period, 3-2 Calgary. Hughes scores twice and Borgstrom gets... Oh, wow, hold on. And Borgstrom scores as well. Duke Silver scores twice on Ricardo McDonough. Second period, 5-3. Yikes. Jack Hughes has a has a hat trick and so does Duke Silver. He scores shorthanded. Pushore scores as well. Uh, this is not looking good for Lee Sweeney. Five goals on 20 shots in his first game as the bonafide starter here in Honolulu. This uh, He took over the starting position in the playoffs, but this is his first season where he has the reins. Trevor Wong brings us within one. We're out shooting Calgary four. There we go. Eli Tolvin and ties it up at five. He knew that he was on the block this summer. He's happy to be back in Honolulu, and he's going to show us why. This game's tied up at five. The shots are 40 to 29 in our favor. Let's see overtime of game number one. Here we are in Honolulu for the first game of the regular season. Three on three overtime. Let's see who can finish it. Off the face off, Ellis Anderson, Duke Silver in front, one timer! Oh, oh my goodness! And then again in front! A great redirection. I don't know if that was a save or if it was off the side of the net. I couldn't hear if it hit the post, but a huge opportunity early for the Huskies. Hughes stopped by Sweeney Jack Hughes. We can't let him score a fourth. Duke Silver over the blue line. Let's it go. Big glove save from Ricardo. Yeah, that shot earlier did hit the post, so it was not a save. But second line's out, Quinn Hughes against his brother Jack Hughes here. That's true, I forgot about that relationship that's going on here between Honolulu and Calgary. Letting Donato walk in and score. What was that? A classic, classic AI breakdown. Here is Quinn Hughes, 90 overall, mind you, five-star defense. And for some reason, there's no one else on the rush. It's just one guy coming in. I have one defenseman here, I have two defensemen there these guys are back there they're not part of this attack Quinn Hughes decides to go into the middle to block the pass to nobody by doing so he bumps into whoever this other guy is Trevor Wong I think yeah there's Trevor Wong who's skating back it's not gonna help though so Quinn Hughes let's look at this in full time this isn't part of the play here he comes goes away from the play gives him a full open shot stops and says oh wait what am i doing i should come back into the play but it's too late he's already scored oh man that was just a shameful shameful display of ea logic so with 45 shots we lose this game silver had the hat trick quinn hughes had five assists okay what a night for quinn hughes and then he ends it off shamefully like that 
So three goals for Duke Silver, five assists for Quinn Hughes, three goals for Jack Hughes. Big night for the Hughes. Should we outshot them 45 to 32, but we lose six to five. So this is a sign of things to come with Lee Sweeney. Even though we score five goals, we can't get a win. It's not going to be pretty for Lee. We're going to have to move him, and I don't care about his potential. I don't care about his contract. I'm going to have to get a good goalie. So continuing on the season here, let's go see the Pittsburgh Penguins. I don't think we've seen much of them, just to find a little date that's about a month away. So let's check back in. Timofey Valentenko, sore shoulder. So we'll check back in at that game. So through the first 11 games of the season, we are 7-3-1. and one. Quite a respectable record, if I do say so myself. Penguins are 4-6-1. and one. Let's see what we can do up against them. First period, 2-0 Huskies. Ellis Anderson scores twice on Ian Belfour. Second period remains two to nothing shots are pretty even 19 to 20 now tied to 20 with the two goal lead if this could be win number eight of 12 games that would be pretty solid two-thirds of the games being wins and we're going to check out the points right after this just to get a quick little idea of how we are looking rupe hints scores but ellis anderson gets the hat trick three goals all from ellis anderson then the captain chips in making it four to one and that's going to be a nice comfortable victory for the huskies boys honolulu is dancing in the streets tonight ellis anderson with the hat trick lee sweeney 29 saves gotta respect it and miko rantanen one goal one assist let's check out how the numbers are looking through those first 12 games we're 8-3 and 1 leading our team in points is Quinn Hughes Quinn Hughes now there is the Quinn Hughes that we have been waiting to see 14 points in 12 games welcome to the party my friend okay now, Quinn Hughes, although he's been very good defensively, has not been as good offensively as he has been in the past, in past uh, few seasons. Uh, let's see, the first years of the simulation, he won 50 points, that's all right. But the years number two, three, four, five, six, uh, and even seven, he was getting between at least 60 to about 90 points a year. Then he got 57. Then with us, he scored about 50, well, between the uh, Hurricanes and uh, the Huskies in his first season. And then last season, in his first full year, got 58, but now 14 points so far. Okay, Duke Silver's 13, Trevor Wong's a point per game, Damian Anthony's looking good at 10 points in 12 games, as Rapidus, only two goals and eight assists. He's playing like a playmaker this season. Okay, Ellis Anderson has eight in 12, negative two. Eli Tolvanen, Cole Perfetti, eight, Rantanen, seven. Kozevnikov in his rookie year here, six points in five games and 12 games. Menino is a plus 11 with three goals. Okay, very nice. Ryan Paling, three, Junior, three. Uh, Vieux is a negative three with three points. It looks like the first pair defense and the fourth line are the ones who aren't performing very well defensively right now. Even though Lindback is playing as an 88 plus five, so 93 overall with five star defense as a defensive defenseman. Now, what I want to see are Lee Sweeney's numbers. What's he looking like? Lee Sweeney. He is 6-3-1, and one, two shutouts, a 9.27 save percentage, and a 2.00 goals against average. Now, that's quite amazing. He's turned it around, and it is not because of him that we are not uh, as optimal on the plus-minus. McClellan in two games is 2-0, and 9.18 save percentage, 2.5 goals against. That is great as well. Sweeney is also considered a rookie goalie, I think, since he didn't play. Yeah, he's considered a rookie goalie, so he could win. Who knows? This could be a big year for him. Jennings, Vezina, and Calder. Who knows? Lee Sweeney. But we're looking pretty good through the first few games, so we want to get another chunk of simulation done as we continue through our quest for a fifth consecutive President's Trophy. Let's go see any good teams around this area. Sharks, 8-3-1. Yeah, let's go see our rivals, of course, the San Jose Sharks. 8-4 win against Eddie Fontaine and the Islanders. 5-3 win against the Capitals. 6-5 loss, a close one against Winnipeg. But then we bounce back with a 2-1 win against St. Louis. And then a 3-2 win against Colorado in that back-to-backer. We are 12-4-1. Vegas, 3-11-4. We shut them out 4 to nothing, thankfully, as we should. Chicago's a good team. We beat them 3-1. They had a winning record. Well, I still do. But it's nice to see some teams with winning records that we beat as well as bad teams. The Sabres, we demolish them 8-1. to one. Now we're really getting into a groove. 4-3 shootout loss to the Colorado Avalanche. LA Kings, we beat them 3-2 to in a shootout after we just lost in a shootout the game prior. And then we beat the Coyotes 7-3. to three. So we are 17-4-2. 
and the Sharks are 15, 6, and 3. So once again, two of the best in the West facing off. That makes sense that there are rivals. Connor McDavid and the Sharks. Let's do it, boys, against our rivals. We took them out last year on our way to the Cup. Guryanov right away. First period, okay, 2-2. Two two. Duke Silver and Miko Rantanen for us. Guryanov and Kempe for them. Two goals on six shots they get. Second period, 4-4. Four four. Shillington and Dewar score for the Sharks, but then Cole Perfetti and Landon Alberts from France. The Frenchman ties it up at four. So shots are 22-14 to 14 in our favor. Not a lot of shots this game, but there have been eight goals scored. So we got to keep this up. We can, we know we can beat this guy, but they know that they can beat Sweeney as well. Power play Huskies. There we go. Skyler Pellick past Nguyen. Nguyen. I'm not sure who that is. Connor McDavid gets one on Sweeney though. Makes sense. He hadn't scored yet. And then Ball puts them ahead six to five. Very tough night for Sweeney. This is what we're talking about with the poise. Great goalie, but if he doesn't have the poise, the composure, whatever you need to get it done, there are some nights where you're just going to get blown out, and that was what it was tonight. 7-5 loss. Yeah. 1-2 forget, that's for sure. Let's keep on going. How many games is that? That's 24 games now on the season. We want to keep on going into the month of December. Uh, and let's go see... This is going to be a tough stretch here. The Leafs are half decent. The Lightning are good. The Devils are good. Actually, you know what? Let's go see the Leafs. I want to go see Ilya Samsonov, our former starting goalie and reigning Vezina Trophy winner. 9-4 win against the Panthers and a 6-1 loss after we beat them 8-1 last time to the Buffalo Sabres. So we're 18-6-2, taking on the 13-11-2 Toronto Maple Leafs with Ilya Samsonov between the pipes. He was our starter. It was three or four full seasons that he was our starter. He won a couple of Vezinas. Let's see what we can do against him here. It is, oh boy, 3-1 after the first. Rantanen, Tolvanen, and Junior past Ilya Samsonov. Atu Ratti gets one on the power play past Lee Sweeney. Second period, 3-1 it remains. Shots 26 to 15 in our favor. Eli Tolvanen scores his second of the night right up in Ilya Samsonov's face right there. 4-1 is the score. Power play for Toronto. It's killed off by the penalty killers. Atu Rasti scores his second of the night, though. We're out shooting them 36 to 21, holding on to a two-goal lead. Landon Alberts makes it three, and that'll be it. That'll be the finisher as we take it 5-2 to two with 40 shots on net. Samsonov stood strong, to be honest. But two goals and an assist for Eli Tolvanen, two goals for Atu Ratti, one goal for the captain, Miko Rantanen. That's 19-6-2, our record now through 27 games. Let's go see a Stanley Cup rematch against the New York Rangers next week. So a tough loss, 3-1 against the Lightning, but then we bounce back with a big win against a good New Jersey team, 5-2. Beat the Blues 4-3 in overtime, but then lose 6-4 to the Oilers. 21-8-2 is our record. Coming up against the Rangers, and we're third in our division right now, so we're in a very, very tough division. Let's go. Stanley Cup final rematch. First period, 3-0 Huskies. Skylar Pellick, Sebastian Genze, and Dmitry Kozevnikov. Power play goal from Pelic as well. Past Juntunen. 3 0. Second period, 4 1. Damian Anthony. Owen Tippett gets one past Sweeney. I think Connor Hellebuck might have retired. I forgot to check the retired goalies last year, but Connor, he Connor Hellebuck may have retired. Power play goal for Elias Pettersson, but we still hold on to the two goal lead here. Next power play gets killed off for being outshot. Another power play for the Rangers. Their third. Of, of the penalty of the period I think third or fourth we killed all those off except for that one where Pedersen scored and we will add an empty netter from Eli Tolvanen to win five to two over the New York Rangers a seven game nail biter last year Sweeney makes 28 saves Kozevnikov makes uh, gets one goal the game winner and Skylar Pellick a goal and an assist so now we can start simulating another little chunk to get about halfway through the season so maybe 10 more games or so let's move into the month of January and we'll go see the Nashville Predators, who are 22-8-0 at the moment. It's very tight in the division with the Sharks and the Flames having very similar records to ours. We beat the Blues in overtime 4-3 again like we did the week before. Owen Tippett's moving to Vegas from the Rangers. That's a big move. We lose 3-2 in a shootout to the Wild. We shut out the Jets 7-0, which is huge. A nice 4-3 overtime win to the Dallas Stars. Damian Anthony sprained ankle. He's going to be out for a week. So that means Gail Redden will get a chance to come into the lineup. On the third line, Vieyer can go there and give it a plus three. Very nice. 
and Gail Redden slots in on the fourth line. But of course, I need to go to the special teams and do those myself, even though you tell it to fill all lines. So there you go. Gail Redden, you get a couple games on the power play. Congrats. 6-2 win against the Canucks, 4-2 win against the Oilers. The Flames, very good team like we mentioned. Menino pulled groin. Ah, so that means Kyle Wood's going to come in, though. You know what? I love me some Kyle Wood. So we're going to put uh, oof, Landon Alberts for sure on the second unit. And Kyle Wood, our super sub, is going to come in and give it a plus one on the bottom pair playing with Junior. 4-3 shootout win against the Flames. That is a big, big victory against the LA Kings. Now, first round pick for JT Comfer. No way. 7-4 loss to the LA Kings. Vegas have a terrible record. They won't even show it to me, though. And we beat them 3-1. Damian Anthony is back, but not until the 6th. So I'm not going to put him in the lineup. And here we are against the 26-13-1 Nashville Predators. We are 29-9-3. Let's see what we can do against this team. One of our rivals. They beat us two years ago in the conference finals. Ellis Anderson Anderson's old team. Let's do it. First period, 2-1 Predators. Rory Cherry and this guy Johansson. Not Marcus Johansson. It would be, I have a picture. Ezra Pittis scores for us on the power play past Philip Gustafson. Second period, Rory Cherry gets one, but then Miko Ranton in the captain brings us back within one. We are being outshot. No, we're outshooting them 24-19 heading into the period. We are down by one. Only there it is. Skylar Pellick, goal number three on shot number 28, I believe that was. We got to get these pucks to go through, man. And then there we go. Junior gives us the lead down 3-2 to up 4-3. Rory Cherry ties it up, though. That's a hat trick for him, I think. But then Trevor Wong comes right back 30 seconds later. Restores that one goal lead. Sebastian Genze makes it 6-4. It's a four-goal third period for the Huskies. Heidel comes back late, but it is not enough. As we will take the 6-5 victory over the Predators. Five goals on 30 shots for Nashville. But those four third period goals were enough. A hat trick for Rory Cherry, goal and two assists for Rantanen and Pittis as we'll take that victory. That's win number 30 on the season. At game number 42, we'll take a pause here to check out the stats. Duke Silver's leading the team with 53 points in 42 games, a plus 30. Bit more of a playmaker this year, putting in some assists, getting it done. Skyler, Skyler Pellick has 50 in 42, Eli Tolvin in 47, Pittis 44, Wong 44. So that's one, two, three, four, five players above a point per game. Ellis Anderson's right there with 41 and 42. Ranton in 35. Quinn Hughes dropped off a little bit, but still 33 points in 42 games and a plus 29 is fantastic. Cole Perfetti, 25. Lindback, 17. And now he's a plus 17. There you go. Damian Anthony, Cole Perfetti's guys are negative 5, negative 7. Genze, negative 1. So the third line could definitely be improved defensively. I'm not quite sure how we would do that since Perfetti and Anthony are already like second liners. Can't really move them down, nor do I really want to move them up. So it's more of a let's cross the fingers and hope they get better type of situation. Uh, Kazevnikov, 14 points. Junior looking good. VAU, 11. Menino is a plus 26. Seven points and a plus 26 through 39 games here in his rookie season. Well, his first season with Honolulu. Gail Redden, one point in five games. And Kyle Wood is a zero through three games. Lee Sweeney, how's he been doing? He is 26, 7, and 3 with four shutouts. 903 save percentage, 2.69 goals against. And McClellan's looking great as well. 4 2 0, 919, 2.2 goals against average. In the entire NHL here, it is Mikey Bruno with 58 points in 40 games leading the league as well. He has 32 goals. I believe it's Tony Klingenberg leading the way in goals, though, yet with 38 of his own. Uh, after that, Duke Silver's close behind, though, at 53. Dry Seidel's at the age of 34, still putting it up. Jack Hughes, Sebastian Aho, Tony Klingenberg. Pellick is there. Johnny Beats. Alex Nylander putting up good numbers with the Blue Jackets. Jesper Brath, of course. Always going to haunt me that I didn't get him early in the franchise mode, even though I tried to trade so much for him. Dubé, Derek Mongo, his first year with the Oilers, 43 points in 40 games so far. Alexis Lafreniere on the LA Kings. He almost went there in the real world, but they have the second overall pick in the upcoming draft. And in the goalie category, Lee Sweeney is the winningest goalie thus far in the NHL. Of course, Michael DiPietro, 25-9-0. He's looking great. His role is elite goalie, really? 
I've never seen an 84 overall have the role of elite goalie. He has an eight year, $7.8 million contract. That is really crazy. It doesn't make sense for an 84 overall. He's not even really putting up elite numbers. He's just putting up good starter numbers. But anyways, after that is Alnfeldt, who's an 84, Ricardo McDonough, Ilya Shosturkin, sorry, Igor Shosturkin, Alex Gorgiev, John Gibson at the age of 36, still getting it done. It looks like this guy, Bo Porter, is one of the best goalies with a 915 save percentage. Even this guy here, Adam Werner, 78 overall. What a scam overall is in this game, man. What a pure scam. Ilya Samsonov, first year with the Leafs, 15, 12, and 3. What a scam. And Connor Hellebuck, he's still in the NHL. He's just that he is, uh, I guess, more of a backup role. Kind of. He's more of a split role, I think. 27 starts. Uh, yeah, I guess, or maybe it was just we were facing their backup that night. Kind of a mix, I'd say. He's down to an 81 overall. He's 12, 13, and 1. In the entire NHL, we have a slim lead over the San Jose Sharks with a game in hand, 63 to 61 the points. Our power play at 36.3% is best in the NHL right ahead of Montreal, who's 20th place. They have a 34.8% power play. Our penalty kill at 81.4% is one of the best in the league. One, two, three, four, tied for fifth with Tampa Bay at 81.4. So I don't think we'll touch anything on the power play or penalty kill. The special teams look good. The top six looks good. The third line is struggling a bit, but we are playing very well and we're going to keep up the dominance. No need to change anything. Let's go to the last game before the All-Star break and see the Columbus Blue Jackets um, at the end of January. Things are looking very nice. 2-1 win against the Bruins, 6-2 against the Canucks, 8-2 against the Kings, 5-2 against the Sharks. Uh, injury will do that after. 2-1 against the Leafs, 5-3 against the Hurricanes, 8-2 against the Oilers. We're on a great streak right now. My, all these injuries, get out of here. 7-3 against the Bruins, 5-0 against the Senators. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 game win streak. The magic piece may just be Kyle Wood. I changed him back from Menino, but I had him up until here, replacing Menino. And then once Menino came back, we still got 5-3, 8-2, 7-3, 5-0. So Kyle Wood, the defense, the top six, the top nine, looks like everyone started to gel after after we took a little pause to look at everything. And now we can take on the Columbus Blue Jackets before the All-Star break. Can we hit 40 wins before we hit 10 regulation losses before the All-Star break? Let's see, up against the 23, 20, and three or five Columbus Blue Jackets. First period, 2-1 Huskies, Junior and Silver. Pitten gets one past Sweeney. Uh, Motombo is in nets for the Blue Jackets. Second period, 3-3 games. So Kozevnikov scores for us, but then Comfer and Pitten score for the Jackets. Shots 20 to 18 are in our favor. Tied at three, heading into the third period. Power play, Blue Jackets gets killed off by our penalty killers. Ezra Pittis gives us the lead now. Four to three is the score. Score. But then Alex Nylander comes right back. McClellan is in nets now. I guess Sweeney got pulled after three sh goals on around 20 shots. Ellis Anderson restores the lead. 5-4 now. Late in the third period. Ezra Pittis makes it two. And that should be enough of a cushion to get us to the end of this one. 6-4 victory for the Huskies. Three goals in the third period. Comp for a goal and two assists. Pitten two goals, but Ezra Pittis is the hero with two goals, both coming in the third period. And we head into the All-Star break with 40 wins under our belts. Let's go to just around February 6th or so. I'm going to pause here to fix the scouting, and then we'll see what we're looking like heading into the final stretch of the season and the trade deadline. All right, the scouts have been sent out once again. We had a 6-5 win against the Oilers there at the beginning of February. Now February 6th, we are 41-9-3. Duke Silver has 66 points through 53 games, doing very well. Skylar Pellegrin right behind him with 64. And Trevor Wong looking to really surpass his previous career totals. Only 86 shots. Pure playmaker, this guy. 63 points in 53 games, 45 assists. Ellis Anderson, Eli Tolvin, and Ezra Pittis all at 60 one or more points through 53 games. Miko Ranton 48 and 53. Quinn Hughes 46. Very nice. Cole Perfetti 32. Lindback 23. Damian Anthony not a great great third season here in the NHL. 21 points in 48 games. I'd like to see more from him but at the same time you know he's getting power play time. He's getting third line minutes with Cole Perfetti. I thought that he'd do a bit better especially after Cole Perfetti had a 73 point season last year 
So I'd like to see the third line pick it up more. Genze, 20. Junior, Vieyer. Alberts is doing pretty well, 14. Menino's a plus 32 with 9 points in 45 games. Kyle Wood in those 8 games, plus 3. Great job from Kyle. Lee Sweeney, 36, 7, and 3, 5 shutouts, 905 save percentage, 2.59 goals against average. So we're going to keep on simulating, as always. We're going to get closer to the trade deadline. And maybe Patrick Kane is the piece to improve that third line. So let's go to one week before the trade deadline and get a better idea of what we're looking like and what other teams' trade blocks are. Canucks fire their head coach, Pierre Boucher. Tough times for Pierre. And the Stars fire their head coach, Dustin Bufflin. That's tough. He won back-to-back -back Jack Adams after retiring from the NHL. Dustin Bufflin fired by the Dallas Stars. They're having an abysmal season. We beat them 3-2 last week. We beat Vegas 3-2 in a shootout. Beat the Kings 5-3. Uh, Damian Palmieri, our head coach, doing very well. He's loving life in Honolulu. Uh, Panarin, oh wow, Panarin traded to Buffalo from the Blues for a second and a third. He's close to retiring probably. 6-2 win against the Coyotes. Uh, we have 45 wins on the year. We lose 5-4 in overtime to the Columbus Blue Jackets. 45-9-4 is our record as I was saying. Coyotes, we beat them 6-2 last week and we beat them 2-1. Peyton Krebs and Sam Bennett to Ottawa for Joe Valeno and Max Comtois. Looks like, I think uh, Vancouver won that trade. That's an interesting deal. Mal Testa, former prospect of ours, going to Chicago with a third from St. Louis for Ristolainen and two thirds. Huh. Vladislav Kamenev, left winger on waivers, 33 years old, fourth liner, 83 defensive awareness. Uh, what's he done this year? Four games. Nothing, no nothing, no points to show for it. Negative one. I'll pass on him. I, I was thinking about him for the fourth line, but I think Gail Redden's better. Sam Bennett, after getting traded to Ottawa, now gets traded with Nicholas Hag to Montreal for two prospects. Okay. Beat the Red Wings 6-3. to three. We are now a week before the trade deadline, and we need to go look at these teams' trade blocks and figure out what we're doing. One last look at the third line. Is the third line something that we need to improve on? I wouldn't mind getting Sebastian Genze moved out and getting Patrick Kane moved in, because Evnikov's up to an 81 overall. That's great. Genze 10 and 12. Perfetti 11 and 23, negative 9. Yeah, Damian Anthony 11, 14, negative 9 as well. Via you 7, 8, plus 6. Uh, maybe Ryan Paling can move to depth. Kozevnikov is a center, but he's 67 face-offs. So, I don't know. Genze has 70 face-offs. What does Vieyu have? He has 70 face-offs. He could go center if he really had to for just a little bit. I don't know. Let's check out the trade blocks first and see what uh, we're dealing with. Sam Reinhardt, per, uh, Brendan Perlini. I don't really really care much for anyone on a three-year deal, though. I'm just going to look through any one-year deal. Interesting picks. Now, Jake Chikrin is still on the block as well. But you know what? Canino has been playing very, very well. So I don't want to commit to Jake Chikrin for a six-year contract when Menino has been playing so well and will continue to grow into an even better player. So I think I'm going to pass uh, officially on Jake Chikrin for this season. Dylan Larkin, one year left at 10 million, 87 overall. Don't need a contract like that. Morgan Riley, 82 overall. I don't need another defenseman. Seth Jones as well is tempting. Morrissey is tempting. But defense is doing pretty well. It's just I need maybe a third line forward. Peyton Krebs, they just got him. Now he's on the trade block. Okay. Uh, Rasmussen is there. He could be a fourth line center. He is a sniper. Not super good defensively. Six foot six, he's a big boy, but I don't know, I'm not totally sold on Michael Rasmussen. I really want to go see Patrick Kane here. Here he is. What's he done this year? Oh man, he still puts up the numbers. He still gets it done. 44 points in 56 games. Patrick, I need to go after Patrick Kane for sure. But is there anyone else? Jared McCann, uh, he's too expensive. I would make him my fourth line center, but yeah, I can't take two guys totaling $15 million. Risk the line in who they just got is back on the trading block. John Klingberg, there he is, about to retire probably. What a legend. Playing in the minors, the disrespect. Hunter Jones never grew. So let's go to St. Louis and see what can we do to get Patrick Kane. Is the money going to be an issue? No, we can get him pretty much straight up. So the question is, what do we trade for him? I'm going to try this deal with the Blues. For some reason, it's telling me that I have to have $500,000 retained. 
even though I still it says 1.7, so minus 0.5, it said I have 1.265 million available. Whatever, he has no extension or anything, so I'm not sure why I would say I'm going over the salary cap. Gail Redden, although I like him for depth, I would like to keep him long term on this team for depth. He's going to want a contract next year. He's 81 overall, third checking line forward. He's going to want something like maybe like 1.8, who knows, and that's too much to pay for a guy who's only playing like 10 games a season. So Gail Redden, good defensive awareness. He has good shooting, good puck skills. He just hasn't really fit on this team. He was a seventh round pick in 2024. A great gem to find in the system. He just never did much with us. You know, he played 81 games. He played a full, he's played two full season with us and he never got more than 17 points. That was pretty good his first season, but then it just went downhill. 15 and 81, 3 and 23, 6 and 21, 1 point in 5 games. I know he wasn't really, you know, he wasn't put on the second line or anything. But still, I would have liked to see more from Gail Redden. He was a good two-way player, but it's not really how our team has worked out to be. And I'd rather get Patrick Kane for a nice little run here. And it's more, like I said, it's more that I can't sign him down the road and I want to give him a career somewhere else. Uh, Coleman here, DeAndre Coleman, he has a medium starter potential. He's not. He's 56 overall, 20 years old, 7th round pick as well in 2028. He just has a little bit of value. We have too many goalies. They want both. Let's see what they say. Trade accepted. I almost feel saying, yeah, I almost feel guilty come on you're retaining salary and i'm getting a guy who's already has 44 points this season you're getting a depth guy who's played five games and a medium starter who's 56 overall 20 56 overall 20 years old so go to bed st louis thank you for patrick kane let's slot him in the lineup i know genze is going to take a little bit of a hit being on the fourth line for the rest of the season or whatever but patrick kane will fit nicely so let's see what we look like so patrick kane will fit on the third line with perfetti and anthony genze will play on the fourth line with paling and kozevnikov funny enough genze fits perfectly for the fourth line he has all green check marks and he fits great there even though he's an 84 overall sniper so that's cool uh, Kane will also pay, play on the second power play unit, replacing Damian Anthony. I gave Damian Anthony first four-man power play unit time, so hopefully that makes up for a little bit. It's only for like 20 games, and hopefully Patrick Kane can propel us to another President's Trophy and Stanley Cup. So I'm very happy to have Patrick Kane on the team. Always simulates like a monster in NHL. So let's go up to the tr up to and including the trade deadline by simming through it. And let's go see Sandro Tommy and Alessandro Girante on the Minnesota Wild. Joe Valeno, who the Canucks just got, they trade him, Nick Schmaltz, and Mackenzie Entwistle to Nashville for Webb, Lukes, and Henry. Three prospects. Okay. Doesn't really make sense how they can constantly trade and retrade players. Meanwhile, if I sign someone and trade them, the uh, the owner comes to me like, hey, just a heads up, you shouldn't be doing that. But uh, the system does it all the time. They sign players and they're instantly on the block and in trade offers the next day. Anyways, Detroit gets a first, a second, a seventh, and Jakob Larson for Jesse Elanen. That's a big trade for Toronto. We beat the Hurricanes five to nothing, shutting them out. New York Islanders, wow, we lose eight to seven in a barn burner in overtime against them. Montreal Canadiens, we beat them 3-2. Morgan Riley is going to Winnipeg, reuniting with John Klingberg, even though he's in the minors, for Nuti Vara and a fourth here on the trade deadline. Can we get 50 wins? Wow, 50 wins at the trade deadline. 5-1 win against the uh, Red Wings. 1-0 shutout victory against the Predators. We're 51-9-5. We are looking to possibly break uh, the franchise record of last year's 63 wins. Let's go up against the Minnesota Wild. First period, ay ay ay, 4 nothing. Thing. Duke Silver with a first period hat trick against Nordgren in Nets. Patrick Kane gets one as well. And Kubalik, the former original Honolulu Husky, gets one past Lee Sweeney. Second period, 5 2. Pelic on the power play. Lucas Janssen, Johansson past Sweeney. We're up 5 to 2 here in the third period. Three out of five coming from Duke Silver. Pierre Luc Dubois brings the Wild within two. Can we finish it? Can we ice it to go up by three? Power play Minnesota. We kill it off. 32 shots on net tonight. We're looking very strong. There we go. That's the icer right there. Pfft. Ellis Anderson scores with six minutes left. Ezra Pittis adds an empty netter. And then Anderson says, hold up. I want one more. I know there's a goalie in nets, but let me just add another. Eight to three victory for the Huskies on 38 shots. Three goals and an assist for Duke Silver. Two goals and an assist for Ellis Anderson. One goal, two assists for 41-year-old Patrick K. 
Kane. What a monster. Let's continue simulating. Now we know the season's looking great. Let's go see. What's a game that interests us here? The centers are 21, 40, and 4. Let's go close to the end of the year and see our rivals, the San Jose Sharks. I only say them. I know we see them a lot, but they're pretty close to us in the divisional standings. So I might as well go and see them because most of the other games are against uh, very disappointing teams like Winnipeg and Dallas. So we lose in overtime to the Lightning. We lose to the Avalanche 4-1, but then we beat the Jets 4-2, beat the Stars 5-2, beat the Senators 3-1, shut out the Hawks. Senators fire their coach, finally, Michel Boussiere. 3-0 shutout win against the Hawks. 4-1 loss against the Sharks. Okay, they're right behind us. Fred Menino, neck strain. All right, so Kyle Wood will come into the lineup now. There you go, Kyle Wood. He's always a big staple here in Honolulu. Huge 7-0 victory against the Canucks. 5-1 win against the Flames. Fred Menino is back. We'll keep him out until the game against the Sharks. 2-1 loss against Montreal. 3-2 win against the Predators. It's the Predators, the Wild. We are 59-12-6 with, I think, five games left in the season. We can still beat our franchise, our previous franchise record. But let's get Menino back in the lineup. All right, so five games left in the regular season. If we win all five of them, we get a new franchise record of 64 wins. It starts with this one against the San Jose Sharks, our rivals. We have clinched the, the division. We've clinched the conference. I don't know if we've clinched the President's Trophy, though. So let's keep up the good work here. First period, 2-2 game, Tolvanen and Hughes. Dewar and Vance score for them. That Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration's son, Trevor Vance or something? 2-2 two, two game. Second period remains 2-2. Two to two. Shots 24-22 to 22 in our favor. Final 20 minutes. Last time we'll see the Sharks hopefully until maybe like the conference finals. Hopefully we don't see them at all. I mean, they get eliminated by somebody else. Kempe makes it 3-2 to two for San Jose. Can we come back and tie it up on this power play? No kill off by the Sharks. Another power play chance. And we still can't capitalize. 3-2 Sharks. And then a final chance. Come on. Oh my goodness. Three power plays at the end of the third period and we couldn't capitalize on any of them so it won't be a new franchise record for wins this year we could tie the record though with 63 if we can get the next four starts with vegas okay 5-2 win coyotes 6-0 win kings okay can we get it super slow 6-5 shootout loss all right so 61 13 and 7 it's the last game of the year of year number 11 it's another fantastic 60 plus win season let's finish it off on a high note first period 2-1 huskies wong and perfetti rory cherry classic gets one for nashville second period okay there we go matt slinback ellis anderson trevor wong ezra pittis all score that is wong's second of the night as well heidel on the power play gets one past sweeney 6-2 huskies shots 29 9 to 19 we're up by four let's just call it a season boys eight to two the final patrick kane on the power play matt's lindback gets one as well another i think that was two for him yeah two goals and an assist for him trevor wong two goals and three assists ezra pittis one goal four assists both getting five point performances to close out the season 62 13 and 7 is our record in year number 11 let's see how all the players and team stats shape up 100 points for Duke Silver, 45 goals, 55 assists, a great season for Duke, his third highest of his career, I think. No, fourth highest. Still, though, 100 points is never anything to sneeze at. 45 goals, 55 assists finally makes more sense with his 99 passing. Trevor Wong. What? A 30-goal season from Trevor Wong? The purest playmaker in the NHL? He had a few uh, less assists. Actually, 69 assists is tied for his second best in his career. But he had eight more goals than last year, which was 20 more goals than the year before that. 90 nine points plus 54 a new career high for trevor wong now that is just crazy crazy numbers those are crazy numbers wow and he's still five more years of five million that is the best deal in the nhl change my mind ezra pittis 97 points from him not a career high in goals but a career high in points going 45 and 52 uh, Eli Tolvin in 95 points for him. He knew that he was in the rumors in this over the last season, in the off season. He gets his second best career total with the Honolulu Huskies, bouncing back from a 77 point campaign last year. 
63 assists. Ellis Anderson, 93 points from him. Another fantastic year from the offensive defenseman himself. Skylar Pellick scored 90 points, which was a, a big bounce back from last season, going 66, then 98, then 69, and now back to 90, plus 54 as well, great plus minus. Miko Rantanen, the captain, goes above a point per game once again, scoring 86 points, one point better than last season, 27 and 59 in all 82 games. Quinn Hughes, good to see him back in a little bit of the higher point categories, scoring 67 points, his Honolulu Husky high. A career high in plus minus, perhaps, at plus 60. Yeah, career high at plus 60. Patrick Kane, now, what did he do with us in 22 games? 19 points. Wow. A huge addition. Patrick Kane, only two penalty minutes as well. 19 points in 22 games from the 41-year-old. A total of 63 points and 70 in 78 games. Now, has he not won a Stanley Cup? since the Chicago Blackhawks. I think that is the case. Yeah, he has not won a cup since 2015. So he is going to want to really go out here in 2030 with a Stanley Cup. Cole Perfetti, a big downgrade, to be honest, from last season. 45 points for him. He had not scored that little since 25-26. So one, two, three straight seasons of going up and then straight down with only a 45-point season from him. But I'm not too concerned. You got to look at the, the career career as a whole. I don't think that's a real big trend for Perfetti, especially 86 overall. I think he'll bounce back next year. Uh, Mats Lindback, big year for him in the goal category. 10 goals for the defensive defenseman, 34 points, plus 40. He's a monster. Damian Anthony now, a bit disappointing to see from Damian Anthony. Only 33 points. He was a negative 4 through 77 games. Maybe next season. Next season, he'll likely force his way into the top six with Eli Tolvanen probably having to leave. So Eli Tolvanen, win that cup this year, my friend. You had a great season. I want to see you get that cup before you have to move. If you have to move, but it seems likely. Genze, 26. Kozevnikov in his rookie season, 23 and a plus 13. Junior's a plus 24. Alberts is a plus 29 in his rookie season. Paling, 16 points, plus 8. Menino, 11 points, plus 45. Great stuff from him. Very impressive. Kyle Wood, there, plus 3 in 11 games. Let's see Lee Sweeney. Let's do it. 50 wins from Lee Sweeney. 50 10 and 6 with 8 shutouts, 907 save percentage, 2.51 goals against average. And look at McClellan backing him up, 13 3 and 1 with a couple shutouts of his own, 922 save percentage. And look at that goals against, 2.07. We'll compare them to the rest of the rookies, but let's look at the entire NHL. Duke Silver, I don't think he's going to win it. No, Mikey Bruno wins the Art Ross with 115 points. The Rocket Richard is shared this season between Tony Klingenberg and Rory Cherry, both getting 72 goals. Crazy totals from them. Dreisaitl, 111 points at the age of 34. Jack Hughes, Sebastian Aho, Keenan Johnson with 101, Duke Silver there with 100, Jesper Bratt scored 100. Look at Trevor Wong, man. I love seeing that. 99 points from Trevor Wong. Pittis, Mongo, Tolvanen. A lot of these people up here are Honolulu Huskies, man. Great totals from the Huskies this year. McKinnon at the age of 34, still getting it done. Johnny Beats, McDavid, Pedersen, Zadina. Good, good stuff. Looking at all defensemen in the NHL. I think the one-two punch. No, it's not the one-two punch. It's Ellis Anderson at 93, then Marku Kerman at 70, then Kale McCarr at 68, then Quinn Hughes at 67. But look at the plus-minus. That's the one-two punch on the plus-minus. Hughes and Anderson. Then Menino and Lindback, not far away. But looking at the rest of the NHL defensemen, uh, Adam Fox at an 83 overall, scored 67 points. Shabbat, 66. Jinkyo Chong, 60. Ekblad, 60. Pretty good numbers from defensemen in the NHL. Looking at all goalies, it was Lee Sweeney with the most wins, getting 50 in his rookie season. Now, just a rookie goalie getting 50 wins is crazy. So it's going to be tight. If we're looking at the uh, Vezina Trophy contention here, if we go minimum 40 games, look at save percentage. Sweeney's not up there, really. 907 is not really up there. It looks like it's Ilya Shosturkin, maybe. Olaf Lindblom, Lindblom, 23, 14, and 4. Nah, that's not enough to win the Vesna. It looks like it might be Shosturkin's to take at a 2.55 goals against average as well. I don't know. Lee Sweeney has the goals against average. So it's between Sweeney and Shosturkin, I believe, for the Vesna. He's 34 years old over on the Devils. It's going to be tight. 
Because looking at rookie skaters, did anyone have a good, really good rookie season? Uh, six, yeah, okay, this guy Marcus Trig, 64 points for him. Pitten scored 60. Pushor 55. France, big year for rookies. So I don't know if he'll win the Calder, Lee Sweeney. Ian Belfort is also a rookie. I don't think he'll win the Calder, but uh, it's possible that he could win the Vezina. It's going to be tight. Lee Sweeney, maybe we could get the Jennings at least with uh, him and McClellan, but a huge, huge season here in Honolulu. We looked fantastic in the point category. Patrick Kane was a big addition. Let's look at the team totals here. Are we winning a fifth consecutive President's Trophy? Yes, we are. We had quite the lead over the New Jersey Devils right behind us, but uh, 15 points is a solid lead to have over second place. 4.3 goals four per game is best in the NHL. 2.5 goals against in the NHL, also best in the NHL. Power play of 33.9%, best in the NHL. And penalty kill of 83.2%. One, two, three, four, fifth best in the NHL. So a very well-rounded season in Honolulu. The special teams, goals for, goals against, everything looking great. Only five regulation losses at home all season with 32 wins and doesn't get better than that. So with all that taken care of, we can now see who will our opponents be in round number one of our first chance to defend the Stanley Cup. We will be facing the Edmonton Oilers. Okay, so Derek Mongo and the Edmonton Oilers just squeak into the playoffs with a 39-34-9 and record. Let's go see their lines and what we will be facing in the playoffs. Edmonton Oilers... So Derek Mongo, oh my goodness, Jack Eichel's on the wing. Look at this. So Derek Mongo, Jack Eichel, and Jerry McLeod, 30 goals, 44 assists, 74 points this season. He's a former ninth overall pick by the Senators. That's true. I think he was a free agent. Second line, Andre Kesa, 34 years old. Stanley Shelley, Rylan Sharp, all rookies. Well, those two guys are both rookies. Lias Anderson, Chase Stillman, Preston Mason, then Justin Surdeef, Zach McEwen, and Logan Stankoven. On defense, they have Zach Duda, a great offensive defenseman, fourth overall pick in 2024. He put up good numbers, 58 points, well, decent numbers, I guess. Uh, Zaboral, at the age of 33, is his partner. Bjorn Ford, Vince Dunn, Jack Heatley, Alexei Nikulin. So they definitely struggle on defense. And between the pipes, they have Tucker Tynan, backed up by Passi Piorala. Uh, so any scratches? No, none, really. So... You know, Edmonton Oilers, they have a great first line. They have a half-decent top six. I guess they have a somewhat serviceable top nine and an overall present forward core-ish. Left wing is pretty weak, getting down the middle. Uh, first pair is passable, and then the second and third pair on defense is just not good. And goalies, Tucker Tynan, I would not want him to just be my starter. What are his numbers? He did get 30 wins this season, which is better than nothing. But an 897 save percentage is not super convincing and a 3.29 goal against average. So it could be a tough playoff run, but I really hope that the toughness will not come from the Edmonton Oilers, which will come in round number one. We've had good success in the first round the last four seasons, I think, in a row. We've made it always to the second or third or Stanley Cup final round. So looking forward to the 2030 playoffs, my friends. We are defending Stanley Cup champions. We are five-time consecutive five-time presidents trophy winners so if you have any suggestions on the lines or anything that you would like changed up in the playoffs please let me know but if this is the lineup then we are just going to go ahead tomorrow look forward to it on july 1st 2020 we will be rolling out the playoffs and it could be the last ride for eli tolvanen so we, and especially for patrick kane uh, in the nhl but eli tolvanen on the huskies so we really want to go out there and get a Stanley Cup. So if you are new to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, putting out daily content here on the channel. As you can see by the new logo and the banner and the thumbnail, putting lots of work into the channel. So I hope you guys all enjoy it. Please let me know your thoughts on that, your thoughts on anything to do with this lineup, with this team, what you think about the Huskies. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow in the next one for the 2030 playoffs. Thank you for watching and I will see you then.